All right, guys. So we're we're going to do a little bit of talking about the uh, market outlook a little bit, and I guess the first thing I want to kind of start off with is, wow, what a great time to be uh, having a bunch of lambs and kids to sell. At least down in our part of the world, it seems like it's uh, you know the only problem I generally have is I just don't have enough to sell. Uh, the, the prices have been really good, so the question I keep getting asked is, is this is this going to continue, or you know? Is it short-lived? You know what's causing all this. So we're going to talk a little bit about this and a little bit about the inventory and and stuff. And and I will tell you, I've, I've got a lot more sheep information than I do goats because goat there just really is not out there. I mean, there's not uh, uh, as much market information out there uh, as there is with sheep. And so you'll kind of see what I'm talking about as we go along. So let's go on here. Let's I'm, this first little graph I want to show y'all. I've graphed here the annual price, and this is what the uh, annual price for uh, goats have done, uh, I'm move my thing so I can see, since about 2003. And you can see here, and if you've been in the goat business, I got in the goat business right about here, 2004. Uh, uh, and then you see here the goat prices. And I remember these days selling down here below a dollar and a half a pound. But you see prices just steadily, steadily gone up. Okay. Now, what's kind of confusing is, is these prices have gone up. I'm, I've graphed. Here's the here's the uh, inventory of meat goats in the United States. Okay, and we peaked about 2008. There's a typo right there. there we peaked about 2008 with about 2.6 million head, and we've steadily gone down. And and then we got here about 2.1 million head, roughly right through here. And, and it's still, and I and the market just keeps trying to buy more goats. I mean that's what the market is doing. Trust me, if we had an oversupply of goats, the prices would be back down uh, below, you know, where they are. But they keep trying to buy more goats and the industry is just not responding. And, and I really, truly kind of thought we might see us get go higher after 2019. We start we saw a couple of years of increases. I thought, OK, here we go. And prices kept getting higher. And I thought even more good. So but now we saw another decrease. And so. Uh, that's good news for those of us who are in the goat business right now because there's not an abundant supply of meat goats in the United States and, and the market so far is telling us there is a huge demand uh, for this product. And so we go and we talk about this. Here's This is all goats. USDA counts them. There's three different segments, but you can kind of look here. and if, When you see the meat goat chart here in a minute, you'll see meat goats drive it. But we're seeing overall all goats are down one and a half percent roughly. And you're asking, well, why is it important to worry about the other goats? Well, if there's a bunch of dairy goats out there, guess what those uh, used dairy goats go into? They go into meat as soon as they're done. So the supply of those, you know, affects us. But right now, overall, we're down one and a half percent. And gore goats, again, uh, haven't seen a, a, a rise up except for one little bit, one year here. But again, they're down nine percent. They're still not there's just barely over 100,000 head of Angora goats left in the United States. Uh, the hair is not worth enough really to fool with anymore. Uh, it's not as profitable. I mean, there are, there. don't get me wrong, there is some profit in Angora goats, but uh, not as much as there once was back in the uh, 80s and stuff. So, but, um, and so here's uh, dairy goats. Uh, and I thought, you know, dairy goats, they had a pretty good run starting about 2014. Uh, we saw several years of steady increases and steady up. And it looks like, you know, I'm not sure. But my first guess is kind of maybe COVID hit them pretty hard. Uh, you know, it hit the dairy, the milk, you know, dairy farmers uh, pretty hard as well. But the, uh, the milk goat guys have steadily kind of spent the last two or three years decreasing. They're down two and a half percent as well. But then we get to the meat goat side and here it is, this story. We're again, we're down again for 2022. We're down about a percent, not a huge decrease, but again, prices the way they've been, and we're, and we're going to show some prices here. I mean, I'm not sure why uh, why we're not expanding, and, and now I can tell you there's going to be some barriers to expanding, you know, going forward now, and we'll talk about those when we get there, but right now, no, no expansion seen this year. Uh, when we look about where the goats are, not much has changed. The one big thing about this map that I think is kind of interesting is Tennessee at one point in time was number, they're still number two, but they used to be number two with over 100,000 head. Uh, but they're not, you know, they keep, each year it seems they get less and less. So 
goat production there in Tennessee may be dropping off some. Oklahoma's dropped from 90,000 head to 75,000. California stays pretty close in that 86,000 head. You know, so it sees some fluctuations, but again, the big drivers, Texas, uh, they're actually up a little bit this time around. Uh, but, but again, at one point in time, they were up over a million head by themselves. But, but the, again, to me, the most interesting thing is you look here, I wish I could circle this for you, but all the goats are pretty much, uh, you know, Corinth's kind of grown and, and done and produced on this kind of Eastern side of the United States and mostly the su Southeastern part of the United States. And whereas most of them are, you know, harvested and stuff up here in the Eastern seaboard, New Jersey and places like that. So we talk about the price of goats, you know, they're up, you know, as high as they are. Well, the thing that helped in the supply is the, the imports, which we don't import a whole lot of live goats in for uh, slaughter. Uh, we, we go ahead and we import that meat in as frozen goat meat. 2017 was a record year. We hit uh, just over 20,000 metric tons. Uh, and you think that may not sound like a lot. It doesn't when you compare it to beef and pork and chicken and stuff. But you do the math of how many goats that is, it's almost about half the number of goats that we produce here in the United States. And so uh, we saw record levels. And then, you know, you can see the gray bar, that's Australia. That's where we get the most of them. And we have for a long, long time. They went through a drought. They went through some wildfires. They had some issues. And uh, they've dropped off. You know, 2018 was a bad year as far as getting them from them. 2019, they tried to come back a little bit. I think that's when the wildfires happened. And 2020 was, again, a real down year, COVID. I think production, you know, trying to get uh, stuff across the ocean and stuff was a problem as well. And, and not only getting, you know, getting across the ocean may not be the problem as much as once we get it to the ports, getting it to us. And that, you know, that frozen goat meat, costs a whole lot more if it had set out there in a reefer unit for a month at a time, still staying frozen. But so we saw a really down year, probably the lowest year since I don't think I will back like 04, 05 in 2020. Tried to bounce back last year, but again, we're still not really even close. If you look at that, we're not even really back to where we were back in the early, you know, 2010, first part of this decade. We're just now getting there. So again, kind of goes to the supply issue. We're not we're not able to meet the supply with frozen goat meat, it doesn't seem, as well. So what does that do? Well, let's talk about prices just for a second. And again, I'm going to use San Angelo, Texas. Uh, the reason why is, is here in Oklahoma, that's the, the most, the major market closest to us. They report every week. Uh, and, and the prices here in Oklahoma are not that much different. Now, if you're not in Oklahoma, I always tell you, you know, find that a major market that's close to you, that'll give you an idea of what prices should be. I just remember, I don't expect to get the same prices in Oklahoma that I get at San Angelo because I, it costs me to drive money, uh, drive down to San Angelo, Texas. So I got to kind of reduce my expectations by the kind of travel cost and pretty close. That's what it is uh, here in Oklahoma. But so I, I'm going to roll up here. This is the five year average for the last five years. You can see here. I should really, I should show you the five-year average and how it's moved. You know, it's just every year it just keeps taking up and up and up. And it's really kind of interesting to me to see the five-year average. You know, we're starting out in, you know, January, February, March, and April. We're above that $3 a pound for that five-year average. Then comes 2021. Oh, my goodness, we had a really good year. I did this talk back about, you know, 1st of March last year. Told everybody, you know, you could probably expect to see some better prices for a couple more months, you'll see that summer slump that we typically always have. I kind of thought it might get a little lower, maybe get a little closer to the five-year average. It didn't really do that, and then it took off. You know, we, we typically kind of stay low till September, but it didn't do it this last year. It dropped in July and just kept taking off and just has done, you know, ended up, you know, in, in November, December, we were selling goats for almost $4 a pound, which is pretty unheard of. And then this is 2022. Uh, we're up around at and it, these are averages prices, you know, up above 450. And, and then there is talk that uh, there were goats that sold just last Saturday for almost five dollars a pound. And we're so uh, these prices are here are probably going to continue again to go up throughout the spring. I, I'm not going to tell you to, to, you know, bank, you know, bank on them being there. They probably that summer slump will probably come back again. Uh, I don't think we're going to see the summer slump again. It, it might get closer to 2021 levels, but I don't see us getting really too far, not with the supply. 
uh, issues that we're going through right now. So probably pretty good money uh, for the 40, 60 pound kids. Here's the averages, you know, the five-year average is 274 pound. 2019, it was 279. 2020, it jumped to 314. And in 2021, the largest jump we've had in any one single year, 70, 70 cents to 384. So in 2021, they averaged 381, 384. 2022, we probably, you know, I'm not going to say we're going to beat that, uh, but that would probably be a price that I would probably think, you know, look at as far as, you know, trying to predict is, is somewhere at average price, about 350 to 380 a pound, you know, if I want to be really cautious. Uh, you know, if I'm talking to my banker, maybe a little higher than that. Uh, 60 to 80 pound goats, kind of the same story. Uh, good, uh, good year, much, much better than the five-year average. Saw that summer slump, again, didn't really last as long as it normally did. This right here is a little abnormal. I'm not, uh, the only thing I can think of was why prices dropped all of a sudden from January to February. You got to think about in Texas, uh, a lot of the major shows shows are done in February. And so these may be a lot, and these are heavier goats. So these might be a lot of the show goats, which show goats get discounted when they get taken to market, but still $4 a pound for a show goats, a lot better than money we've got in the past, but still pretty decent prices. I would expect this price to rebound back up uh, to be as, you know, about the same level or maybe higher than 2021, come back down in, in the summertime and kind of follow the same pattern. So, you know, again, the average, you know, big, not not quite 70 cents jump from 2020, 2021, but pretty good. I mean, the average 372 a pound. So I know here in Oklahoma, the the, the, the most of the markets, uh, the, the target weight for these guys is around that 60 pound mark. So somewhere between 50 and 70 pounds is where most of our guys are trying to sell a and uh, because that seems to bring the most money. When we look at kind of predicting, and, and again, I, I'm not real good. At, uh, you know, I don't have I don't have a fancy computer model that kind of tells me what uh, what prices are going to be. I kind of just go off what's been happening in the past. I kind of looked at what I predicted last year. I wasn't really far off. And so kind of going off this year, you're going to see, like I said, really high prices, I think, through the first two quarters. See that summer slump we will probably get, get below that four dollar a pound and then and then come back up in the late last quarter of the year. And, and then maybe stay a little closer to that four dollars for that big heavier weight gate goat. Now, again, if your goat's weighing 60 pounds, you may get closer to this this price over here than you would this price. But if you got those 80 pound goats, those probably where you're going to end up at. But 80 pound goat for four dollars pounds, three hundred twenty dollars. Uh, that's a pretty good day uh, for a goat. But now the thing that I want to kind of show you, and I had to, I run this this morning, and and I. Because, you know, prices are really good, and, and most of y'all know that. Y'all answered the registration question, you know, what you've sold for, and I was looking at that. But I think most of y'all realize, too, costs are going up. Feed My feed cost here has gone up about 20 25% just in the last six months. I don't see it. As a matter of fact, I see it increasing the next load that I have to buy. Uh, the hay I bought last fall uh, will probably cost me more this fall when I go buy it. And so I kind of did a budget. I, I didn't want to put, I didn't want to be overly optimistic. So I've just used 350 a pound, 10% death loss, 20% replacement rate, which means we're keeping 20% of those kids back. Different kidding rates here. And you can see, you know, you know, we're, we're still making pretty good money. But if you, if you were listening last year and I showed this budget, this, this number, this profit number, the returns to labor and land and management was higher last year than it is this year. So yeah, we're making pretty good money, but we're going to have to really work on controlling our cost or we're going to eat into some of these good profits that we've seen. Although I'm not going to complain about $80 a head profit uh, on, on a goat or, you know, sheep probably maybe not near as high. Uh, I, I didn't quite put a sheep get budget together. I just did it with boat, goats. But you can kind of see, you know, I always throw out there that we need at least 150% kidding rate and we're still we're making about 30 bucks a goat. And that clears all our costs. You know, if we're just looking at covering cash, you know, we're still looking at about 80 bucks profit, you know, covering cash costs. But now as economists, I'm going to tell you, you need to cover those fixed costs as well. So not a bad year for goats. I don't see much changing uh, this year. 
I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't want to predict and go further out much more than, you know, going to 2023, but uh, right now I can't see nothing that that's going to cause us think again, I think it's more of a supply issue than it is a, uh, you know, that we got to deal with that again, that can change overnight. Uh, but I don't think it's going to change as far as the United States production is concerned. And, and another, another, other things that can factor that drought, you know, bad, bad weather, all kinds of things can affect this. But like, again, that's kind of what we're looking at. So I'm going to go into the sheet part of it now. But the first thing I, I found this graph today, and I thought this is pretty interesting because, and I know we're not talking about beef and chicken and pork today, but think about, you know, why are we seeing these big increases in sheep and goats? And all, you can kind of look to these three markets and kind of see here, these three markets have seen some really good price increase. You know, this is retail price for uh, the product average. And you can kind of see, They've seen some really good price increase. So beef and pork and chicken is getting more expensive. Why not take, you know, uh, lamb and, and goat and go right there with it? So I think this is helping us as well. And so then we get into the sheep side of this deal. Again, sheep haven't really seen an increase since, in, you know, I think the last year was about 19, you know, 90, 91. Uh, and they're down 2%. Now, I will tell you that USDA, when they count sheep, they count hair and wool sheep together. So I can't tell you if hair sheep are up and wool sheep are down. I have no no knowledge whatsoever. I got some I got some thoughts on it, but I don't I don't have any research based information. So, but overall, sheep are down two percent. The story is a little different when we look at sheep production. You know, here's where all the goat production is, and the only similarity is uh, Texas still have a bunch of sheep. They actually have more goats than they have sheep. But all the sheep production is kind of over in the northwest part of the United States. And so, you know, that uh, that's a little different. Uh, I, I can tell you here in Oklahoma, that 52,000 head of sheep, uh, I would dare say 48 or 45,000 of that is hair sheep. I don't, you know, the wool sheep guys are not that big. Uh, so I, you know, I may be off, uh, you know, 10,000 head, but I would say it's probably more than half are going to be hair sheep and not the wool sheep. So. Texas, I'm not sure what the breakdown would be down there, but you can kind of see the production is. And, and we go to look at imports. Imports now, that's that's a different story. There's a bunch more countries besides Australia and New Zealand producing lamb that we can get by into. And and unlike goat, lamb have seen a pretty good, you know, pretty steady and actually a bump in 2021. And the reason, again, kind of goes to supply. We're down in numbers. We've had a little bit of decrease in capacity as far as what we can harvest. And so, again, we tried to fill the void with, with imports. Typically, that this could hurt us, but it didn't this year. Oops, go the other way. So here's, here's the big thing. Here's uh, uh, cold storage. I've done these talks in the past where this cold storage number is way up here and, and just the amount of lamb that we have in cold storage. And when we get a bunch of lamb in cold storage, it, it'll hurt the price, retail price of lamb. And, and, and it really can, can reduce or depress the, uh, the prices for our live animals. But you can see here, last year, we stayed well below our five-year average and we're well below last year's. And I say well below, we're, you know, four or 5,000, uh, uh, four or 5 million pounds below in cold storage. So the supply is not there. We don't have it in storage. And then when, why are we down so much in the cold storage part of it? Look at slaughter. Slaughter rate stayed pretty consistent with our five-year average, but we're starting out below. And that's pretty good. I mean, that's not bad considering the capacity that we've lost and some of it coming back online, but not all of it. But we're still staying pretty close to that five-year average. And, and so kind of really doesn't answer the question, of why, you know, why are we not having better supplies? But this, I think this next one does. The average dressed weight, uh, you know, again, well below the five-year average. So when this when this weight is low, that means there's just less pounds of sh uh, sheep meat out there for available. And again, we're starting it out below. So we're down below as far as production slaughter, and we're down below in weight. So again, supply is going to be down. So again, that helps us who are trying to sell these sheep into the live market. And then we look, what's that done for prices? The national lamb cutout value. And again, a bulk of this is probably going to be wool sheep. But wool sheep prices do help do affect hair sheep prices. And so you can see uh, 
really good year in 2021. We kind of plateaued out here, but again, we plateaued out at, you know, $6 a pound, which is, you know, for the national cutout value. And we're staying up there. So if this value can stay up there, uh, retail all lamb price, Again, this is lamb at the retail sector. We're sitting at you know almost nine and a half a pound for re lamb meat. So that's well above you know you know two dollars above what average five year average is. So we have down price or down supply. Retail prices are high. National price is high. Then the other thing is replacement ewe lamb price. One thing about what these high prices cause, and at least I know y'all are probably better at it this, than me. But, you know, the thoughts in my head kind of go to, well, prices are high, it's time to expand. But it's a little tougher to expand, you know, when I was paying 150 to 200 to a little over $200 for replacement U, now I'm, that same U is going for 325 or better, uh, kind of affects the bottom line a little bit, because now uh, prices, you know, may need to stay higher, you know, you know, they stay high at least four or five years, but, you know, because the prices go back down, you know, to two dollars a pound, this three twenty-five U not going to be that profitable. So, but right now, replacement costs are high. Again, demand. You know, because because people are now are seeing these high prices and they're trying to get in or get in or expand their uh, sheep business. Now, you know, I'm not able to do a whole lot of separation for hair sheep and wool sheep, but San Angelo now is reporting uh, their hair sheep prices separately, and so uh, I'm able to pull these out, and so I. The, the standard kind of look at when we talk about hair sheep and wool sheep com comparing apples to apples there is they have a 60 to 90 pound class. That's what they report on. So I kind of look at the 60 to 90 pound hair sheep in, in Texas. And I don't have five years worth of data, so I can't give you a five year average. But you kind of see here the last three years, 2020, 2021, prices have just kind of gone up. Uh, I know there are people selling uh, hair sheep right now for $4 a pound here in Oklahoma. Uh, so, I mean, we're seeing really good prices. Uh, again, I'd expect those prices to drop a little bit come summertime. I, you know, I, I would not, you know, wouldn't surprise me if they dropped down back below $3. Uh, but, you know, I don't know that they would get back down here to this 2020 prices of $2 a pound. So uh, the summer, you know, when, when all these lambs that we're lambing out right now start trying to come, uh, come into market, uh, we might see a, a little drop, but again, we could see should see some recovery in this fall. Uh, you know how good the fall prices are going to be depends on how big this drop is for the summertime. And again, the first two columns here, this is what the LMIC that's what they predict uh, for prices. This third column here is hair sheep in Texas and San Angelo, and that's kind of my predictions. I'm not going to worry about this first column. That's natural direct slaughter lambs, but when we look at these 60 to 90 pound feeder lambs. Hair, hair sheep are you typically higher priced than what the than the, the wool sheep are. And so we've seen some pretty good prices. Probably going to average just under $3 a pound for 2021. But, you know, you could, we could see some prices here. I think we'll stay, you know, if I stay above $3, I think this first quarter, we're probably going to beat that. Probably going to average somewhere between $350 and $370 a pound. Second quarter, could stay strong and in, in, in stay up around there, but I, you know, I'd guess somewhere in that, you know, 330 range, you can kind of see my prices down through here. Uh, and again, wool sheep kind of following the same pattern. But again, you put that in a budget, it's, again, it's still profitable. And again, if you, uh, again, the big key to this is having the live ones available to sale. So still not a bad thing uh, uh, for, for sheep guys. That's kind of all I got on the on the market stuff. I didn't really go into really great detail, uh, uh, pull up all the different charts uh, about it, but that's kind of all I got.